Hello. Welcome, everyone. Hi. We'll give it a few minutes whilst everyone trickles through and join us. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome, everyone. Um, do drop um, a hi in the chat if you want. Let us know where you're from. Um, you're all on, um, you're all muted at the moment. We've chosen to do that because there's a lot of you. Um, and uh, but at the end, uh, you'll have a chance to be unmuted if you want um, to ask questions. But we'll get to that at the end of the session. Um, welcome, everybody. It's so nice to see you all. Thanks for joining us. Um, and thank you for supporting John Arban Textiles um, over the weekend. It's been fantastic. We saw so many um, join us yesterday for the sessions. Uh, and it was, it was really good fun. I, we've all had a, had a great time, um, really enjoyed it. We had a chat this morning and we were like, yeah, super excited. And um, thank you for your purchases and support of the products, the specials. Um, Seem to have gone down really well, so thank you. Thank you all. Um, we've got um, a really exciting session today with Sarah Elwick. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hi, Carrie. It's uh, it's great to have you. Hi, Carrie. Um, am I ready to sort of start now then, or um, how how are we doing for time? We well, we're doing fine for time. <laughs> we're just <laughs> just kind of easing in. Give it a few minutes before, maybe yeah. before sort of starting properly. Exactly, waiting okay. for a few people to join us. Still, uh, we're nearly at a hundred people. Wow, Hi. amazing! <laughs> um, a couple well, of other technical things. Um, we're recording the session, um, and that we're doing that so we can add it to YouTube uh, later. So in case you need to dash off, don't worry, we will put the whole session up on YouTube later so you can get everything or you want to watch it again because there might be some useful tips that you want to re-watch. So yeah, you'll be able to do that. Um, and um, I think that's it for all the kind of technical stuff. Um, so uh, I think we'll pass it on to you, Sarah, and, um, and off we go. Brilliant. Uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining this morning or as Carrie said, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are or if you're watching on replay. Um, so the structure of this um, hour session is I'm going to do a presentation where I'm going to talk through um, lots of inspiration, hopefully of lots of different kind of creative mending to inspire you and hopefully to kind of illustrate the techniques and then I'm going to move on to doing a kind of mini demonstration, um, live demonstration. I mean I won't be able to cover everything but hopefully I'll be able to give you the kind of basics to get started. Um, so yes, creative visible mending and this is a lovely image by Flora Coll Collingwood Norris. I'll give you um, some other names of people to look up. So if you're on Instagram, She's on Instagram as Creative Visible Mending and she does some really beautiful mending. So I thought I'd start the presentation with um, this kind of quote about why do we mend? I mean, there's lots of different reasons, but I thought this was rather beautifully written. And um, this is a quote and image by Kate Seculis, um, clothes historian, writer and mender. More and more of my clothes are mended, some extremely visibly. Um, so that my relationship with what I wear is inextricable from my textile interventions and my fibre art practice. I call it menditation, it's good for the soul. And actually, I believe clothes have little souls. They interact materially with their wearer and absorb life force over the years. We take this ordinary wardrobe magic for granted. The lucky socks, the results dress, the inexplicably favourite old t-shirt, but it should be honoured and that's what a loving bout of mending does. And I think uh, the more I kind of get into it, the more I really feel that kind of connection and you sort of, you know, you do um, get real attachments to clothes that you've had a long time um, and it's a lovely thing to be able to kind of then add to them. And I actually find once I've started working on them that I actually like them even more through mending them. So a little bit about me and my background, not, not much, but just a sort of overview. Uh, why mending? Um, the in, an introduction to the most commonly used types of mending. I'm sure a lot of you have done some in the past as well. 
Um, and then examples of modern creative mending, including um, cuffs and edges, patching, all different types of mending, just to kind of inspire you, hopefully. Um, top tips and equipment, and then I'm going to go on to the visible mending demo and Q&A. Great. But do ask questions in the chat if you've got any questions as we go. That's absolutely fine. Okay. So, um, as I'm sure a lot of us who are on this call have, I've always had a kind of love of textiles and making um, from a young age. And um, I studied textiles at GCSE and A level. And I think that really kind of kick started um, the kind of more sort of in depth love of sewing. I used to do a lot of sewing and applique at those stages. And I was lucky to be able to sort of specialize in textiles on my art A levels. Um, then I went on to study my degree, studied textiles at Winchester School of Art, specialising in knitwear, and then going on to the RCA to study for an MA in menswear and knitwear. So I'm from a kind of knitwear background, mainly machine knitting, um, but, I had, but then since sort of becoming a mother in 2016, I became a lot more focused on kind of hand making, so hand knitting, but now more focused on probably embroidery and mending. Um, so I taught knitwear for a long time at Winchester School of Art on the knitwear programme and now I teach on the knitwear programme at the University of Brighton. So I'm still very much in the kind of um, knitwear kind of teaching. Um, I ran my own knitwear accessory business from 20, 2009 sorry, to 2016, um, designing and making my own machine knitted accessories. Um, and then I kind of, it came to sort of a natural break when I had my first child. Um, because of time mainly but I think now because I've become much more interested in the kind of hand making and sustainability and mending I think my my practice has kind of taken a slightly different route now anyway so I'm kind of happy um, to be going in that direction and um, the image here is is of me holding a, a mitre square blanket that I um, designed and made and there is actually some John Arbon yarn in that blanket just to um, say because it's just some beautiful colors it's a big mixture of yarn but um yeah I had some beautiful um John Arbon uh, knit by numbers to use for that brilliant so again why do we mend so um prolonging the life and connecting with our much loved clothes so we we're talking about before the stories and memories the hold they hold the comfort the joy the good times the connections to others um, a big part of it for me, and I think for a lot of people who do it now, is, is to reduce our environmental impact via craftivism and more and more um, reducing our consumption and what we dispose of has never been more important. So I think um, it's kind of a really kind of key part that we, yeah, we kind of hang on to the clothes we've got and not just throw them away if they've got a little hole. Um, and then finally, for mindfulness or mind, mindfulness or mindfulness, whichever way you want to say it. And this is what I really love, the sort of small moments of creativity. So I've, I'm busy, I've got three kids, um, I teach part time, you know, I've got a lot going on, but I find this is something that I can fit in in kind of small bits. I don't need a huge amount of equipment or machinery um, and I can just do it in between other things and get that sort of feeling of creativity and flow, which I really love. Um, so that's something important to me. So types of mending. So the kind of classic mending, which I think people will probably be quite familiar with um, sort of tr from traditional mending is, um, it is traditional darning or the sort of way of describing it is warp and weft mending. So you're basically kind of creating almost like um, a mini woven section within your garment. And that could be a knitted garment or a woven garment. You can do this technique within either. So I thought this image here, this is actually from a World War II Make Do Amend book, but I actually thought it was a very clear um, visualization of this technique. So what you do is you're kind of stitching in vertical stitches, your warp threads. I don't know if anyone's done any weaving. And that's, you're kind of creating a structure over the hole. And then you go back and do your weft where you're going over and under and um, kind of giving that a bit more structure. Um, so this image on the, well, it'd be your left, is a multicoloured chunky patch of uh, darning that I've done as a sort of demonstration one, um, and showing that to, that's the way you can kind of make it more creative and more innovative is through using different colours, um, different yarns. 
Um, so this is where it becomes kind of uh, a more creative pastime, I suppose. Uh, I teach um, mending workshops, in-person workshops, and I've definitely had um, quite a few people who've in the past have sort of they did it maybe at school or something and it was all very strict and they had to you know if they made a mistake they had to take it out and do it again and that's definitely not what I um, kind of teach I you know I think e even if you do a mistake it's not really a mistake it's just part of the process it's you know the, the variations in how people stitch in their hand is is part of the charm of it really so I think that's one thing to sort of think about is there's you know you don't have to do very neat kind of squares it can be much more organic and I'll show you some other images so this is some mittens so these were ones of mine that I have had that I made um about sort of nine years ago or so now and now I've started mending the patches with these kind of multicolor um mended patches and I just keep adding to it as they kind of wear through um, so you can just this is where it becomes this kind of really nice interactive piece of clothing that um, you know you've kind of added to over the years and as the story kind of develops um, as you do that. Yeah they're beautiful. Thank you. Um, this is a, a lovely image of an example of an early 19th century darning sampler from the Textile Research Centre website. And here you can see, so it's the same warp and whiff technique, but just through variation of where, where you go over and under. So maybe instead of just going over and under um, every other one, you're going sort of over and under, over two and under one or whatever, and you're building up these patterns or just simply through putting two different colors in your warp and then two or three different colors in your weft, you're gonna get these kind of variations in pattern and structure. So it's, it's quite nice to kind of look back on. Um, but then, as I said, it can become much more organic and much more um, kind of a sort of almost an art practice. So there's a really, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of her, a mender called Celia Pym. Um, she won the um, Women's Hour kind of craft prize a couple of years ago, I think, and had a big exhibition. But she does really kind of um, beautiful art, art mending. Um, and these are mended paper bags. She did a whole project of mended paper bags. And as you can see, this is much more organic and free flowing. So you can be doing it in quite a different way like this. Um, this is a visible mending commission on a toast charcoal gray cashmere cardigan that a lady asked me to do. Um, she wanted something quite colorful. So, and was quite happy for me to use whichever colors I liked. So I worked on this quite intricate um, multicolored mend. Um, so yeah I think you know it can be really colorful I really like working with color but also equally this could be something that was quite subtle and you could just be working with lovely different shades of grays and it could be a really kind of subtle and beautiful mend in that way so there's definitely no right or wrong way to do it um, the other um, kind of really popular um, knitwear mending method is Swiss darning or duplicate stitch which some of you have probably done so it doesn't have to be done as mending it can just be done as a stitch detail to build up um, a kind of stitch pattern in something that's already knitted or in this case like where you've got a hole you create again some kind of warp um, threads to um, build up the structure first and then you do the Swiss darning into them. So this is another example of Swiss darning just um, this is by Flora Collingwood Norris again from Visible Creative Mending and she's doing this to replicate a fair arm knitted pattern. So it's something that you can kind of do as a decorative thing as well as for mending. I find it quite a lot more fiddly than the warp and weft mending because you're literally trying to follow every little loop. Um, or it can be done again. I thought this was a lovely example. Um, Uli Schnechtenstein, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, who, who used the Swiss darning technique to produce this really kind of characterful face on a cardigan and I think it just adds so much to the cardigan and gives it a really lovely character yeah that's really cool isn't it lovely good, isn't it it's just it's a good uh, technique if as well if you've got feral patterns that have like just a little bit of one color you can add that in later yes you do good stitch as well can't you yes exactly mm. yeah so this is definitely not something you have to just use as a mending technique it can just be a nice way of adding a little bit of detail somewhere maybe on a cuff or whatever you know it's quite versatile great okay so blanket stitch is a really good one which again I'm sure a lot of you have used 
Um, but it can be a really lovely one for creating kind of mended eyelets or patches or for adding kind of patches. So you can obviously the classic way is kind of going along in a line. But for mending, going around in a circle, which again, I'll show you some more images in a minute, is a really useful and it's probably the simplest technique. So I think, again, when I'm teaching workshops, this is one that's often really popular because it's a really good way of kind of um, mending small holes um, mm -hmm. and it can be a bit easier to get to grips with than the kind of warp and weft darning. So a really simple way. So this is where, like, when you're thinking about mending, you don't, you don't have to always do something kind of super complicated and elaborate. Patching is a very kind of, you know, legitimate and good way of mending something. Um, and that's where you can kind of keep scraps of things that you've got. I mean, that's a bit of a problem of mine. That I've got lots of scraps <laughs> of things, too many scraps probably to mend other things. But this was a, a jumper of my partner's. It was very worn out. He didn't, he wasn't that worried about it. He just wanted to be able to use it for gardening without it kind of falling apart completely. Um, so I, I used an old um, sweater of one of my kids that they was grown out of and cut the patches and then blanket stitch all around the edge. Um, and I did actually do blanket stitch then on the inside of the patch um, just to reinforce it, just because it was quite a kind of it was a kind of unraveling quite quickly. But that's it's not necessarily you don't have to do that. No, I guess you can just switch that as uh, as the project kind of asks for. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's sort of, you know, some yarns, they, they, they're just, you know, this was a particularly kind of fraying, delicate yarn, but if they're a bit more sturdy, they won't really need that anyway. Um, this is a lovely one. Um, this mender on Instagram, Marja Niemi, or M3 Niemi on Instagram. She does these really gorgeous um, patch socks and tights where she's used lots of scraps of old jersey, old t-shirts or old kids' leggings or whatever hung onto them. And then she's done these beautiful kind of um, character form ends. I just, I love these and they're so nice. That's cool. um, Somebody in the chat pointed out that once your socks are worn out at the bottom, it's, it's good to keep the tops of them for patches. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And this is a great way for socks because obviously the, the kind of machine and um, sort of um, socks you buy on the high street or whatever, they're very kind of a, a thin jersey. So trying to do lots of, mending with with wool or yarn is very very fiddly and time consuming and you might want to just do something like this with jersey that reinforces it and it's kind of a bit more of a kind of fun mend like that and exactly using things you already have and scraps of old socks is a great one to keep as well sure. um this is another way you can use the blanket stitch so to do more of it, it's called a kind of eyelet mend so going round a hole like this um Kate, who mended this, has actually put then a scrap of fabric behind, but you don't have to do that. You can just leave it with a hole um, and then adding any other stitching. So you can really start to kind of give your mend a bit of personality um, and really think about it creatively. And this one I love um, yeah. by Bell Jacobs, an article on visible mending and these eyelet mends in neon on grey. I just think they look brilliant. I just, just think it's such a lovely. If you've got lots of little tiny holes, this is actually a really nice technique for um, mending. Absolutely. Um, and then the other way you can use this um, is again round in a circle, but then you're continuing round. So you do the outline, but then you kind of continue to just follow the circle round um, until you complete a kind of um, a sort of um, a patch and I think this looks like it's a kind of thinning sock or tight or something so then she's just reinforcing over the top of um, the fabric where it's thinning as well so again it's a good way of adding a bit more reinforcement and structure. Yeah gorgeous. Um, also good for woven patches so this was a jacket of my partner's so I just found some really lovely um, fabric to patch it and then with the woven ones you don't have to do this but I tend to um, hem them so I fold the edges underneath and iron them press them flat and mm. then blanket stitch them on to give a neater edge but if you were doing something more like denim repairs or something you wouldn't have to necessarily hem them you, you know part of it might be the, the kind of more frayed um, and organic looking so again it's sort of just about thinking about how you want it to look overall um, and trying different things but again you know don't panic if what the first thing that you do it doesn't look quite right you can always take it off start again you know or just add to it so I think it's important to just um you know let it be free and not sort of um, put too much pressure on yourself it kind of evolves with you with exactly 
Yeah. And as your skills evolve, I mean, if you're, you know, presumably most of you on this call are all crafters anyway, so you've probably got quite good hand making skills. Um, but when I teach people, there's often quite a mixture of ability and some people are very worried about whether they've got enough sort of hand skill to do it. But I think it's just about um, trying it and you will, you know, you quite quickly get better at any of these techniques. But I actually think the men's that look quite sort of um, a slightly wonky and then a bit more organic looking, I actually think they're really charming anyway. So, I th you know, I think it's important to think, remember that. So this was the jacket kind of in process. As you can see, it was in quite a state, but it was his real, a real kind of favourite linen jacket for the summer. So, yeah, I added patches to elbows, pocket bags, and then round the um, collar and cuffs, a kind of bias binding, again, that I made from strips of fabric and then stitched round. So that's another really nice technique for doing cuffs and collars. Not so much on knitwear. I wouldn't probably put binding onto knitwear, but it's it's kind of up to you. But it's more for sort of woven jackets, shirts, maybe T-shirts, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, so this is a little example of... Um, patching on top, some visible mending book by Aruna Kunaraj, I hope I'm saying that right. So very, again, very simple, just turning the edges underneath, ironing them underneath, and then stitching. So she's just done a running stitch um, or blanket stitch, I think would be good. Mm. Or patching underneath. This is a nice technique um, that, again, it's a really nice one for denim, actually, that you can patch something from underneath. This one looks like they've folded the edges where it was worn underneath first again and pressed it flat to give a kind of cleaner edge but it could be a more kind of rough and fraying edge and then they're the kind of um back stitch um the stitch detail over the top um erin lewis fitzgerald is a really good mender to have a look at she's brilliant she's sort of tackled every different type of mend and this is again what you can with patching so this was a really kind of shredded old jersey t-shirt and she's just added these beautiful patches bias binding to the neckline some little kind of other tabs around the kind of cuffs and sleeves and then she added a um the kind of heart with a little scroll um, and it's I think the owner is someone called Marge and I think it says Marge forever on the <laughs> on there which is rather lovely but I just think what she's done to it actually makes it so much more beautiful than it was in the first place for sure um she has a, a Facebook group called Modern Mending which is open to anyone it's got thousands of members and it's a really useful um Facebook group for any mending questions so people post photos of I want to do this thing has anyone got any tips but they've also got a kind of huge kind of back catalogues of men's that people have done and so you can kind of have a look in there if you want to I look on there quite a lot this is another men by um Erin so she she calls them experiments when she does when mm. she's sort of trying something out so she's just I think there must have been just quite a tiny hole on this cuff and then she's added these kind of wiggly stitch details which she's then over stitched over the top and again, I just think it adds such a lovely um, little detail to the cuff that makes it really special. So again, you could just do that as a sort of um, embellishment idea. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't necessarily have need to have a hole in the first place. You're definitely inspiring people already, Sarah. I've seen people. Good. There's just some beautiful stuff out there that I, I mean, I was the same. I've kind of got into mending in a big way in the last probably th three or four years. And there's a real community of people doing beautiful, exciting things and just really enjoying the process of kind of embellishing and, um, yeah, interacting with their clothes. So I just wanted to have a quick chat about cuffs and edges, because um, that's something that sometimes is a bit more tricky. Um, so this is a, a, the mitten that I talked about earlier in progress um, and the thumb trim had completely broken. So where with the sort of warp and weft mending, normally you do the vertical lines first. Sometimes with the cuffs and edges, you need to add a bit of structure first. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've added this sort of horizontal round the thumb. And also it's thinking about keeping it in position. So I actually was kind of wearing it while I was mending them so that you're not pulling it too tight or getting it too baggy. So because you don't want to, especially with kind of something that's going to go round a finger, thumb, cuff, you don't want to pull it too tight while you're doing it so you can't actually get it on again afterwards. So you're adding some structure first and then you can mend into that afterwards. Mm. Um, and I've got another few examples here. So this is an, a participant of one of my workshops and she used this technique to build up 
a very frayed edge of a jumper. So she added all the horizontal stitches first in pink and then started weaving in um, the vertical stitches in this kind of greeny colour afterwards. And then you've got some kind of yarn structure to actually weave into over where the big hole was on the cuff. So she was really pleased with that because she had been sort of getting into mending but was just a bit stuck with the edges. Mm. This is another really good tip for a cuff is use a bottle or a jar or something like that to put into your sleeve okay, um, while you're doing it again to stop it pulling too tight while you're stitching into it and keep the shape. So again putting in all your horizontal stitches and then she's um, Spider Weave Studio has um, done her vertical stitches in yellow over the top. Um, so yeah, mm. just finding a kind of bottle or jar or whatever that kind of fits your sleeve is a good one to use. Um, this was another one of workshop participants who worked on mending some fingerless gloves. Again, she did it on her hand as she was mending because oh, she wanted brain. to make sure she could still <laughs> get her finger in afterwards. Um, so yeah, it worked really well. And um, it wasn't too, I mean, I think luckily she was sewing with her, the hand she normally sewed with her right hand. So I think it might be a bit awkward if you were doing it the other way around, but I guess you could mend them both on your non sewing hand. <laughs> if you had to do yeah. both pair, both sides of the gloves. You can't do that, if, especially for fingers of gloves. Do try and put something in it, maybe like a rolled up piece of paper or fabric or something, just so that you're giving it a bit of structure to begin with. I'd be worried I'd stab my own finger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was very careful, actually. She was absolutely fine, but um, yeah. Um, and again, just a de more detailed shot of the bias binding that I did for this linen jacket. So that works really well for a woven garment. Um, just yeah, so those somebody in the chat mentioned that you can use maybe jersey to add uh, bias binding to knitwear. Yes, like yeah, you definitely wear. could. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that I think it depends on the you know the thickness. I mean, I think all of these things are kind of personal taste as well. Like some, I think adding jersey can be really effective. Some people may not like the look of that as much, but I think it, again, it's sort of up to you to decide what you think you want to what you want to work with. This one I found the other day on Instagram, um, a lady who has a, it's called Thread Event, her Instagram called Gilamina, and I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. So she's just wow. chain stitched over, it was very kind of worn Marimekko apron, and she's just over where it was really kind of fraying and worn, just over stitched over the top, and I just think that looks even more beautiful than the original. So um, yeah, lots of things wow. you can do. So basic equipment. So needles, obviously, um, you can buy specific darning needles, which are a bit longer than normal needles. So they are quite useful, especially if you're doing a bigger patch. But at the same time, it's not 100 percent necessary. I didn't definitely didn't have those when I started mending. So I think the main thing is that you've got something with a big enough eye to get your yarn through. Um, but um, a slightly blunter needle can be good because sometimes when they're very, very pointy, they can get a little bit caught up. Um, but yes, don't, you don't need to worry too much. You don't just try to get one with a bigger eye than just a normal sewing needle. Yeah. But basically just get going with what you've got. Um, so a small embroidery hoop. I would say these are, this is more useful than a darning mushroom. Darning mushrooms are really good for socks because you're going into the heel and it's curved. But if you're doing a jumper or a um, sleeve or whatever, you want to keep it flat. So a small embroidery hoop is really useful. Um, yarn, um, again, it's sort of trying to match your yarn to your, I mean, it's in, it's in the thickness, not necessarily matching the colour, the thickness to what you're mending. Mm -hmm. um, but you can split down your yarn you've got. So you've got embroidery threads, you can split them down thinner. Same with any hand knitting yarns you've got. And these are some more specialist equipment that if you wanted, you could get. So flat darning mushrooms from Slow Stitch Club. These are really lovely and they're just flatter on top. So they're less likely to distort what you're mending. And they've got a little, you can unscrew the top and then you can keep your needles in the middle. They're absolutely beautiful. I haven't got one, but <laughs> they're lovely. Speed weaves are something where you can, it can help you to set up your warp weft, weft threads. Um, again, I haven't got one, but I think they are really lovely. And I think it can really speed up the process and keep the things under tension while you're working. And Slow Stitch Club also sells these, the Sashiko style darning. Um, so top tips for getting started. Just start thinking about um, whether it's, you know, how large it is, what material, what type of fabric or yarn to use, what technique to use. 
Um, is the damage on high stress or low stress areas? And this will give you additional clues as to the type of mend, materials, techniques, patches to reinforce, etc. if something's very worn. And then, as I said, for knitwear, try to match the thickness of the knitted fabric with the weight of the yarn. So one, one ply yarn for fine gauge knits, two or three ply for medium weight and six ply or, or sort of um, hand knit for chunky knits and hand knits, etc. But most of all, oh, the line's gone a bit funny. Remember, there are no rules. Respond to your garments and the materials with a creative spirit and have fun. Oh, one thing I just quickly wanted to mention for anyone who's UK based, there is a mending exhibition on at Somerset House until the 25th of September called Eternally Yours, Care, Repair and Healing. And it just looks absolutely beautiful. So if anyone can get there in the UK, I would highly recommend that. Um, and I've got references here, which is, I'm happy to send this through to people afterwards if that's useful. Right, I'm going to move on to the demonstration now. Okay, that was, that so you was fascinating, can... Sarah. Really nice. Good. Um, so can you see? You can see my yep. hands. Yeah. Can okay. See. So um, I've got some. Oh, I'll, I'll just talk through the equipment quickly while I was, was talking about it. So, embro small embroidery hoops are really useful, and then you can set up. So obviously, these are samples but you can set it up. So you pull this under a bit of tension, not pulling it too tight, because you're gonna find that it distorts again, but just put, pulling it so that it's under a bit of tension. The other thing you can use, which you've, if you haven't got an embroidery hoop, or you're doing something a bit smaller, is a jam jar lid with an elastic band, and that works in a very similar way. So you can just put that on, put that round, and that's quite useful. If you have got darning mushrooms, they are fine. I mean, I personally find holding that and mending quite awkward, um, but they're good for socks. I just think they're not so good for garments. Mm. Um, and as I said, like a bottle, if you're going to be for cuffs and sleeves and that sort of thing. Um, right, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to start with the eyelet type mending. So you just thread up your needle. I'm using it doubled over and then I just put a knot at the bottom. And then, actually, I was going to show you on this bit of um, embroidery thread, if you want to split something down, just decide whether you're going to do it two, two ply, three ply, and then you can just split that down. And you're just, mm. they're always a bit twisted. So it's just kind of trying to untwist it as you go. Yeah, I remember doing that when uh, I was doing cross stitching. Uh, yes. When I was younger. You always exactly. Had to the thread down, yeah. So just untwist that. So I've this is, um, it gets a bit tangled sometimes, but there, there you go. Um, and this, this is a top, this is a, like a lightweight jersey top that I wear a lot in the summer. And it started developing lots of tiny holes. So I started doing this little eyelet mending on this. And it's really, it's really works really well, actually. And you, I'm just, I'm just, there was another hole that I was just going to add to it. So, excuse me, it's always more awkward when you're demonstrating <laughs> you're doing fine we can see clearly what you're doing so. <laughs> okay so just thread up your needle that's the bit that I always end up struggling with because I end up with shaky hands <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, or you know you can buy a, a needle threader I don't use them but a lot of people find them really useful hmm. um just put a couple of knots in the bottom and then I'm just going to go around this little hole here. So you go in from the back of your work and just let the needle come out and then the knot should hold it in place. And then you're just doing a simple blanket stitch kind of round this hole. So you're going back in from the back to the front, kind of near the stitch you've just done, pull it through and then catch that loop. And then again, you just do the same next to, so do it quite close because you're trying to create this kind of little eyelet mend. And then just catch that loop like that. And just follow round the circle. So this is, I think this is a lovely thing to start with. It's just, a, it's quite simple. You can get results quite quickly. And as I say, it's great for tiny holes than trying to do something much more complicated. Mm. So that's like, just carry on round. 
Now, the other thing, which I've got one in progress. Oh, where is it? I'll take it off here. Could you, could you hold that, uh, what, the one you just did, could you hold that up a bit closer to the camera? so we? Yeah, can of see course. See, see what it ends up looking like. Even a little bit higher? Is that better? Yeah, lovely. Quite difficult to, yeah, I don't. No, that's fine. Just we get to get a bit of a closer look. I'm just yeah, curious. And these are ones that I've kind of done already that you can see. So they just kind of follow around in a circle. And again, you could patch something behind it. If you wanted to add another little bit of fabric behind to reinforce it, mm. that is also possible. Lovely. Thank you. I won't, I won't finish that one off now, but that follows around. The other thing you can do, which was in that image, is you can follow that round. So this was some John Arbin yarn that you gave me to have a play with. So it, on a knitwear jumper, if you had quite a bigger hole, you could follow that round and then you start picking up the the, the um, blanket stitch that you've just done and then keep patching round and round and round and round until you kind of fill in the hole in the middle, which is quite nice. Yeah, this was the Appledore lace that we yes. used. Then too, wasn't it? It works quite well on the finer kind of knits because it's, it's quite lovely. Fine. Yeah, it's lovely. It'll, lovely on the kind of um, on a knitted jumper. I think it wouldn't work so well on the jersey, probably. Um, but yes, I mean, if you've got some lovely yarn at home that you want to use that's a bit thicker, just again split it down like I was showing before. So hopefully that makes sense. And then I was going to show you how to do the warp and weft mending because that's the one that sort of everyone wants to do and it is a bit more fiddly. That, that's the one that I've been kind of attempting the most when I've tried to. Yeah. So not always very successfully, but <laughs> give it a go. I mean, it, take, it does take practice. I think it's, it's getting the tension. So that's where embroidery hoop is useful because you're keeping it under a bit of tension first. That's probably where I'm wrong. So the stitches don't get so pulled because if you don't do it with an embroidery hoop. They tend to either pull too tight or get really baggy. Mm. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to add these vertical stitches here. So I'm just going to, actually I've got this one. I did have another needle threaded up, where's it gone? I thought that might be easier. Okay. Oh, they have a tendency to disappear when you- I've <laughs> <laughs> lost the needle now. I'm gonna have to put another one. Okay. It's fine. Let me just grab a. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll just talk while I'm while I'm threading up a needle. The again, it's about sort of assessing with the hole, like with these ones, because obviously these are demos, so I've actually cut these holes in this piece of knitwear anyway. So um, I there's a day, not, about that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there's not actually it's not actually that worn around it, but if they're quite worn, it's a good idea to do a kind of in and out stitch to reinforce, um, you can kind of see I've done that a bit more with this one around the edge. So you're reinforcing the bit round the hole first and then it just gives it a bit more stability. Um, and the other thing you can do, which is something I've done again with this one, if you want to do different shapes, um, you can do a little running stitch of the shape that you want. So if you wanted to try and keep it to a nice neat circle or an oval, or even other shapes, I've done little ones with little hearts and then I've done a running stitch of a heart and then you fill the mending in, in the middle of the shape. Good idea. So you, you can, you know, you don't have to do a square, you don't have to do a circle, you don't, or you, you don't have to do that at all. You can keep it quite organic and quite, um, you know, so, a different sort of wonky, wobbly shape and that still, still looks really lovely. Um, Mo Wen has just asked in the chat about your yeah. embroidery hoops uh, yes. and where you get them from because she says they look really nice and sturdy and they yeah they do. Um, these were ones I just bought from um, Hobbycraft I think. Oh yeah you can yeah. get them online as well then I assume. I don't think they're anything particularly special um, but yeah they, they, they yeah they work well but I think any I mean most embroidery hoops are quite Similar, so yeah, I, d I haven't I haven't tried lots of different ones. These are just ones I yeah I had from Hobbycraft a while ago. So yeah, with the with the mending. So I, obviously I've started doing it here, but I'll just show you. So I've knotted the end. I'm going to go in from the back. If you're doing the in and out stitching, 
just the good thing about knit is you've got these channels and rows you're trying to follow the channels if you can um and then you're going in and out so i would keep use the needle can we see this can you see this um to put yeah, the stitches on mm -hmm. so you can do a few stitches at once and this is where the longer darning needles are quite useful because you can fit more stitches on your needle but again if you're if you miss a stitch or if you go over two stitches it's not going to look terrible it's just gonna you know, people won't even really notice it so don't get too hung up on being on every other stitch mm. so just can you see that like that yeah and lovely. Can just pull that through so you can do those on the edge stitches or if it's quite stable you might not need that it depends Okay, so that gets the top. And then if you want to do these little, so these stitches I've just done on the edge are just little decorative stitches. So for the end of this row, I'm just going to go through to the back. Then you go back from the back through to the front and I'm stitching. Um, it's like a, just a couple of stitches. I mean, I'm not, it's very difficult because I'm sort of looking at it a bit of a weird angle where I am. <laughs> you want to go back in there. So you're doing that little decorative stitch at the top if you want to. You don't, don't have to. Mm -hmm. And then to do the bit where you're doing these threads, you just literally start at the top. So you want to start a good sort of half a centimetre away from where the hole is so that your mend is happening away from the hole so you're not too close to the edge of it. Oh, hold on. It's getting tangled. There we go. And then you just do your long warp thread and go back in at the bottom like that and this is where if you want to add more colors like I've done here um, that's kind of up to you you know two two or three colors maybe you know if it's your first mend and you're not feeling too confident maybe start with one color but I, what I would do is I would thread up your needle with your first color do however many rows so here I've done three of the this sort of um, tealy greeny color and then you can just skip along count along one two three if you're doing three in between and then do do your your next three of the green mm. so you're you don't have to keep re-threading or you can leave it like this where it's just kind of hang the thread is just hanging at the front and then you can pick it and, th and thread it back up again afterwards so for this one I'm just going to skip across here bring in the yarn again here and go across and this this is where the embroidery hoop comes in handy because uh, you Definitely. don't have to worry about your tension when you're pulling yeah. Hmm. yeah this is where if you don't use it because i think when i started i didn't really use an embroidery hoop and it just tended to get a bit um either baggy or a bit kind of pulled hmm. yeah definitely and it means you're not yeah you're you keep your your st your stitches that you're you're mending with in under good tension as well. Oh God, I said it gets yeah. caught. <laughs> okay, so they that's your kind of basic um, mm -hmm. loop there. And then I've started doing the mending. I'm going to show you on this one because it's already threaded up. So um, then when you're doing your you set up, I mean this one again. I've only done half because this is a demo one. Mm -hmm. um, but then you're going back and doing your weft stitches. And so you're doing, trying again to do every other stitch. So if you're going over where you've got some, it, some of your garment and you're trying to reinforce it, you can pick some of those stitches up with your needle. Um, and again, you're trying to do it, you're trying to do over, under, over, under. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing your, the, the next row, you're trying to do the opposite of what you did on the row above. And that's what's going to give it this nice sort of, um woven effect but again don't panic <laughs> this is the main thing if you pick up a stitch and you think oh no it's not the right one it is still going to look nice so yeah, for sure and so just pull that through and then once you get to the hole you're going to do the same with the stitches that are here so we're going to go over under yeah you're getting lots of nice feedback in the in the chats on the oh great Having the Thank color you. combos and it says it's really really effective which really yeah yeah this I I mean I love working with color anyway this is some nice um so when I did a lot of machine knitting this is some lovely one ply merino that I have from when I did a lot of machine knitting 
mm. and it's perfect for mending so merino is a lovely smooth yarn and um yeah it works really well so yeah you can mend with something thicker than the garment but it i just t it tends to look a little bit clunky and a bit bulky mm. so if you can sort of match the thickness a bit more it makes a big difference so again it's over under and then you can you know you can turn it around if you feel like you want to work in, from a slightly different angle and then you can push it back up slightly with the needle <clears throat> to try and keep it so obviously this isn't an actual loom I presume this is where something like a speed weave makes it a bit easier because I think they actually have a little tool that you can almost push those threads almost, up um, almost like on a on a on a weave where you're kind of pulling them I don't, I don't know the technical terms for these things but you <laughs> yeah exactly and I think they have beat on an actual loom they have a beater which kind of pushes exactly. the yarns back exactly um but I think these little speed weaves have like a little hand one that just pushes them back a bit more easily than the needle but you know this is this works it does work well and once you've kind of done a fair amount it kind of as you can see here they do they do sit fine they, you know and the other thing is you can add it more into it afterwards so I've done that before where I've done a mend like this and then it seems a bit gappy so I've actually then gone back into it afterwards and added more into it afterwards to kind of fill in the gaps so you know all is not lost if you've done it and you think oh no there's loads of gaps everywhere just just work into it again yeah yeah it's like a constantly evolving thing like we talked about before so is there any other I don't think I'm not sure I can show oh so I've got this one as a the edges again this is sort of edges in progress so well, that's this is fun. where I've done the kind of warp stitches worked into the fabric here and then the warp stitches going that way and then the pink kind of threading back in afterwards there mm. um, and as you can see with this one that you know you can do a heart and then I've done uh, two three three black and three pink and alternated them and then gone back the other way and you get this nice kind of dog's tooth effect yeah um, has anyone fun. got any questions yeah, we can open up to questions. Um, if anyone wants to talk to us, you can raise your hand. So if you'd like to ask a question out loud, do that. Otherwise, um, type away in the, in the chat box and then we'll, uh, we'll let you know. I think we've got a question from Alice. Yep. Hi, Alice. Hello. Thank you for, for being brave. <laughs> What's your question? yeah so I have done a little bit of visible mending before um but I've got this jumper at the moment where it's got a hole right in the middle of the chest oh, okay. um, and it feel, I feel a bit self-conscious about doing like a visible mend have you got yeah. any tips for something I like mean that? obviously yeah that I mean that is a tricky spot doing it right in the middle of the chest <laughs> so if it was me I probably would do that I mean, you don't have to be completely invisible, but trying to just find a yarn that's a similar match mm, to the okay. colour and just try and do a more just sympathetic, you know, less visible. Um, and then it will just tend to blend in a bit more, I think. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, that's probably what I would do. Um, is it? Uh, it yeah, I, I think. Yeah, it's, it's that tricky it's, thing, isn't it? It's, it's, a stri it's, a, it's stripy. Um, OK. So, yeah, just get some. I mean, you could if you're you know you could do so it's navy and white you could have your yeah. second so you could do your navy try and match the navy but then maybe the, the stripe that you're going across with that's another a good idea a different different stripe just oh, add genius. a slight variation um so it will be kind of you know a little bit but not you know not kind of this obvious massive kind of patch on your chest <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much that's really helpful you're welcome you're uh, welcome good one, luck one thing i'd uh, i'd mention as well that i've i've done uh, which isn't really I, well, I guess it is mending in a way but if if you're if you do embroidery mm -hmm. um you can you can like add similar kind of yeah um, things in other places it doesn't become so obvious that it's just the one you can yeah do, like, that's a great idea or actually. something to, yeah uh, exactly yeah I mean you could make it a kind of bigger thing around the neckline and just add as, as Carrie was saying some more embroidery and other stitches and just kind of so it's not just a patch that's yeah that's a great idea um oh, well, yeah. I, hope, I hope you get inspiration to give it a go Alice yeah cool 
Um, um, I was going to just, I was uh, also, I've just got this on the screen with a sort of patching. So this was the same with the blanket stitch. So just a little patch of, of knitting, knitting, and then I'm patching it with the blanket stitch around it. And patching is a great, great technique, actually. And you, again, like I showed those lovely socks, you can do them in all different shapes. You can see that, okay. People are saying how they feel really inspired by this. Um, Good. Yeah, and then, then I've also had a mention of uh, somebody um, saying they've heard about felting, so uh, yes. needle felting holes. Yes, yeah, needle felting is a good one. Um, again, I haven't actually, I mean, I think I did it a really long time ago, but I haven't used it recently. But there's, um, yeah, you can just use, um, that. you can buy kits, but obviously you can use your needles to just, um, with the sort of raw fleece to then just you just it just kind of maps it all together so I think you can just you just lay over the top and underneath I don't think you'd do it on a hoop at that point and then just hammer away with the needle to create a sort of matted um uh, sort of belted yeah. section I'm sure it I'm might sure. not work on massive holes it might no, not true. be stable enough but I haven't actually tried it so I don't know I think it works really well on small holes though yeah, and I'm sure there's, there's spinners watching today that will have uh, enough fleas lying around to do a few men's. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it's a great way to use your stash as well, isn't it? Uh, yes. Different types of men's. Definitely, and I think you can really sort of, if you've got some lovely scraps of some really nice colours, that you can just have a, you know, have a play with um, putting them together and seeing what um, kind of works together, really. That's what I like about it. So you've been you've been working with the Apple Door lace on on the swatches that yeah. you've been showing us now. Um, but some, somebody was asking if uh, there are any other yarns uh, from John Arben that uh, would be good for mending. And I and I reckon it just depends on the thickness of your product. Yeah. Really, of what you're trying. Yeah, to I think this was the the thinnest one you had, wasn't it? Because this is too. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that um, one, so or or you've also got um, a lace weight of the Alpaca Supreme that could okay, could yeah, work. that would work yeah. well. Mm. Uh, but otherwise, yes, if you're mending hand knits, then by all means use kind of whatever weight you knitted it in, or or mm. whatever weight it's in, or just split it down. So like um, with the embroidery threads, you can just, I mean, sometimes you have to be careful if they're a more delicate yarn that it doesn't just kind of break but you mm. can split them down into smaller ends if you need to. Yeah, um, but yeah, I don't think, I think, yeah, if you, the thicker ones would work well on other hand, it's... Um, yeah, um, and I was also thinking maybe the, the Exmoor sock might be a good one to, to mend with as well. Um, yeah, I think you know the yarns, uh, I think you know the John Arban yarns better than I do, but yeah, the so it sounds like a sock that. yarn would, um, would be a good <laughs> one. Still it's still quite new to me. It's only I'm only three three months into my John Arbin careers. I'm still okay. learning, but uh, but from what, from what I've picked up, I think yeah, the Exmoor sock would be a good one because it's got that little bit of nylon in it. Makes it a bit stronger, especially yes. if you're doing kind of elbow patches or yeah. things like. And obviously, that. good for mending socks as well. So yeah, that sounds yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Um, should we see if we've got any other questions? Anyone yeah, that wants to wants to raise their hand and. Uh, let us know. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I don't think we have any more in the chat, unless I've missed any. Sonia, have you seen uh, any that I've missed? <laughs> no. Um, then I think, uh, oh, what are the twiddles? Twiddles? We've been um, I'll just unmute myself briefly. Uh, yes, so every time we make a batch of yarn um we have to test to make sure that it's the right thickness the singles ah. so we have a little machine which will then um measure off i think it's i want to say like maybe 20 yards or something it's some sort of old-fashioned measurement and then you weigh that and then you know how many you know meters long it is so um they're kind uh, so of a byproduct of our production <laughs> so this was a question for us really rather than you sarah so. <laughs> yeah this is very very technical <laughs> um, I, yeah i don't know what the twiddles are 
<laughs> end up with this little byproduct that's like maybe three grams and is oh, right, okay. a single um and they come in a million different colors because we have to do it for every single batch of yarn we make so they are wonderful for visible mending and mending but also perfect um, oh that sounds great yeah kind of only sell if you come visit us or if you see us at the in-person open weekend so uh I'm afraid it's not very relevant to this uh chat because most people on the zoom will not be seeing us in person but uh that's a great that's great <laughs> though it's a nice sort of extra thing you sell at sort of in-person shows and things um mm -hmm. not uh, yeah perfect for this sort of project yeah definitely because it's just you just want small amounts really don't yeah you? yeah but... it really doesn't use much yarn at all actually mending it's surprising even big holes you don't use they don't use much I've actually just had one one more question um, and they say, uh, Christine says, what would you recommend for the toe of a very fine knit sock? Um, so did you knit it yourself? Because if you obviously if you knitted it yourself, you could try and mend in what you knitted it in. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, just choose trying to choose something strong. So if you're if you're doing the warp weft darning, then the merino or you can buy specific mending yarns, which again, they do have a little bit of nylon in, so they're nice and strong. Mm -hmm. um, you can get those. So there's, um, I know Loop um, do um, men meant specific mending yarn. Um, I'm not sure any others at the moment, um, but yes, you can, you can still buy those sort of individual packs of, of mm -hmm. mending yarn, or you could, depending on how you felt about that, you could do more of a creative patching where you're reinforcing it with some other materials that you're kind of cutting the patches because the thing is with socks is they do get a lot of hard wear you know the heels and the yeah. the sort of um underneath the ball of your foot they do wear through really quickly um so you know patching is a really good option because you're just giving it that bit of kind of more strength and reinforcement so I think it's a personal choice but yeah if you're mending choose something that's a bit stronger than um don't want to kind of a very I don't know something like alpaca for example is lovely and fluffy but it's not particularly strong so it might not work so well on those on no, those wet funny. areas somebody in the chat uh Sean she's uh, just said uh, you could always cut the toe off and knit a new one if it's a hand knit socks yes <laughs> that is true yeah good tip yeah I have seen people do that actually then where they kind of yeah just chop chop a section off and then just re-knit that bit so yeah Depends yeah. how proficient and knitter you are, but I'm sure you're all, sounds like you're all pretty proficient, I would imagine. <laughs> there are probably some very proficient knitters in this, <laughs> in this call, for sure. Sometimes, in, if I suggested stuff, there was a woman that I did a um, mending workshop with and she wanted to mend a cuff and I suggested re-knitting the cuff and she was just like, oh my God, no, I don't want to do that. So I think it depends on your skill level, doesn't it? This is, this is actually a good point in the chat now. Jen has said, don't do what my dad did. He mended his arm, the ar hole in, it, in the armpit in bright turquoise. <laughs> do, not, do not look great. Do you, do you have any tips for, for that sort of... Uh, for the underarm? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, again, I would do it in a, in a, very, in a sort of similar toning colour that you're not really going to notice that's just going to blend in. So I did the same. That the, the, My partner's jumper where I did the elbow patches it was also quite worn under the armpit, but I just found a grey that was a very similar grey and just mm. just to blend it in. Yeah, you don't want you don't want your armpits catching people's attention, really, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I do. I've I've actually got a stripey jumper that's that's meant that has worn under the arm, and I'm I've struggled to to work out what to do with that one because it's a tricky tricky mend, especially with the stripes. It's going to be visible, I think, whatever I do. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think just I think with those ones, it's trying to find a similar match as possible with with yeah. the yarn colours and just um, yeah, just try to make something not as conspicuous. No, <laughs> probably. But I think this has been a super super useful chat, um, and uh, and lots of people are inspired. And I'm definitely going to go through my mending pile and see what I can <laughs> whiz up. Good. I mean, it's they're, they're, the, the techniques are fairly, fairly simple, I would say. It's just about a bit of practicing and then do look at there's so many people doing it on Instagram, which is what inspired me that it just, you know, go look at what they're doing. And, and there was often some little kind of video tips and different things and just. Sure. Yeah. Just and also just it. just letting go of the idea that it needs to be invisible, that it needs to be perfect, like allowing yes. it to 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 look interesting and, and different. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I think. 
you know, I've, I've noticed recently on the on her, Hugh Fernie Whitting's store's new program, he's wearing visibly mended knitwear, and yeah. it's really obvious. And he's been because he's very pro. I've, I've, I think I heard him talking about it as well. And I just thought, oh, that's so lovely that it's sort of you know kind of quite a popular figure is starting to wear visibly mended sure. knitwear on TV. Yeah, let's promote it. <laughs> yeah. Great. Brilliant. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Yeah. Um, it's been it's been really fun, and I can't believe this hour has gone super fast. Yeah, it's whiz by. Um, yeah, for sure. Thank you so much, Sarah. For oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for inviting me. I've really um, enjoyed it. Where can people find more of your work if they? Want um, so yeah, the main place at the moment is Instagram. So I'm just at Sarah Elwick, all one word. And um, I am in the process of sort of setting up a kind of mailing list, and then maybe this is going to spur me on to then hopefully teach some slightly longer online mending and um mm. embellishment courses so yeah if you follow my instagram those are going to probably be coming up in the autumn that i'm going to do some kind of longer online um mending and embellishment because oh, i'd like to do some more knitwear embellishment um kind of classes as well oh, i'll yeah. be signing up for that for sure <laughs> all right uh, well, thanks very much have thank a you very day. much everyone have a great day thanks everybody for joining take care bye thank you